All right, I have successfully gotten rid of all the white shapes in my illustration and replaced them with some flat color. I can see that if I turn on the gray and see that I don't have any solid whites anywhere in the image and anything that's solid gray is not part of the image, right? Especially when I have my vector line art turned on. Now that I have those, I don't need this duplicate of my vector line art anymore that I rasterized in order to, to fill in for gaps and I can just delete it, right? So as long as I have the smart object, I'm good. And on my flat color layer, so notice my basic sandwich here. I have white bread on the bottom, different colors in between. I just have a, a gray black background layer and a flat color layer and then my black bread on top. What I'm gonna do is click on the padlock of my background and that changes it to a, an opaque layer, and then just click on the padlock so that that's locked. I don't want to accidentally color on my white bread layer. And I can lock my, uh, my different backgrounds as well, and I might as well make another duplicate. This is just to inform my color selections and to fill that with black. So I have a background of white on the bottom, I have a background of black, and I have a background of middle gray. So thinking of a tattoo design, a sticker design, a t-shirt design, if it looks good on all three when I'm done, then it's going to work well on any kind of color t-shirt, any kind of color website, any kind of color poster background. And we're going to be make, making posters of this potentially with our next assignment. Okay, I'm just going to leave white on for now, but let me lock both of these. And this is the glory of flat coloring. Now that I've done that, I can just choose colors. I'm just going to keep it simple and go for my pastel. And I can just drop them in with the paint bucket tool because I I did it in a way that they're all separated, right? So just using the paint bucket, I can choose a color like magenta and then just drop it in. I can even steal a color from myself by holding down option and saying, okay, I like this blue. Maybe let's put that blue right there as a feather. Let's put that blue right there as a feather. Let's put that blue right there as a shadow. Let's put this orange as a highlight in the helmet. Let's uh, take this green as a feather. Take this green inside. Let's take this bone color as the bone and as the bone. Oops. Just make sure you're clicking on your flat colors. And then this red, where else do I want this red? Maybe I want it here. Maybe I want it here. And here. Maybe I want it here. And then I want to hold down option, select this yellow, and then go to my brush, break this shape, and then go to my, my paint bucket and paint it in. What color do I want this? This is kind of the background. Maybe I want that empty. Maybe that's supposed to be empty space. So I'm going to select that with my magic wand and then just delete it from my flat color so that the background can come through. Sometimes you can color things you don't mean to color in this process. All right, now other things I might want to change. Let's see, let's steal this color using the paint bucket, holding down option, all on my flat color layer. Going to use my brush, going to break it between the lines here. That's why I like coloring within the lines instead of just behind them so that it's easy to select. Let's see, maybe a different green. Hold down Option. 
Okay, so these are admittedly pretty crazy flat colors. But they get me started. And now that I have my flat colors, I'm going to save it. And now I want to think of inspirations. If I'm going to do more than just flat color. Oh, another thing I can do, by the way. Like I know that that magenta is too strong. I know that red's too strong. So what I can do is click the magic wand now and uncheck contiguous. And then just select all the reds at once. And I can replace that with maybe this lighter pastel red. Or let's see. I can even go to edit while they're all selected. Fill. And then say color. Not foreground or background, but color. And then it will give me a, a color selector. And I can pick the exact red I want. Or maybe no red at all. And then same thing with the magenta. I'm going to select that. Also select this. And maybe I want it to be just a little less crazy. Or maybe I want it to be like a bluish gray. I can drop that in. Okay. Same thing with the yellow. Maybe I want the beak yellow to be a little bit different than the other yellows. Or maybe I want them all to be a little, little paler. So I'm going to choose a yellow that's brighter and lighter and fill that edit fill foreground color that I just selected. And then, of course, I can do image adjustments to that. This is all just with flat still. And I can brighten it. And I can do image adjustments, hue saturation, and I can intensify it. And I can even play with its color temperature. Now, what's interesting is I might like those more as flat colors. But it's also interesting sometimes to have really vibrant colors behind. Any way you get to flat colors is really no wrong choice. The next step is I'm going to duplicate my flat color and then I'm going to lock it. And on the duplicate, I'm going to now go to image adjustments and I'm going to play with the color balance. And I'm going to play with the levels under direct adjustments. And I'm going to go darker. I'm going to limit the lights. This is how you can get a nice shadow tone. So I have just created duotone shadows. So I'm going to rename the layer duotone shadow. Just by duplicating my flat color and then darkening it. Right? You can darken it in lots of different ways. I actually added a little bit of cool color to it which a technical duotone would just be adding black to your local color. But my colors aren't really local colors. They're like crazy colors. So now this is what's really neat. With my lasso, if I want to do cut edge duotone, hard edge duotone, like we see in animation, all I have to do is swoop down with my lasso and delete out highlights anywhere I think it should be catching the light. And it will cut across all my color. And I tend to do this pretty dramatically, as you can see. Like, I don't like a lot of subtlety when I'm starting it out, because you can always limit it later on. You can always uh, take the opacity down on those shadows. But right now, I'm just trying to find those duotones. And I like starting with cut edge duotone or hard edge duotone. Like we saw in the mentorship presentation. I like starting with hard edges and then softening 
because it's easier to soften in Photoshop than it is to sharpen a soft edge. And I like how this method, I'm not having to paint new shapes. I'm just erasing away across all of my colors anywhere I want highlights to appear. So it's good to have inspiration. So I have some inspiration here uh, from Behance. I have this artist I found, which does some really great duotone color. And then I also have these kind of skateboard graphics I grew up with for stickers. I especially like the really thin duotones. But if you're looking at this really technically, there is actually no duotone in this image except actually anywhere because white and black are not colors. So this is just flat color, flat local color, but then white is used as a highlight and black is used as a shadow. So even this eyeball, the eyeball actually has a local color of gray, but most of it's in highlight with white. So duotone color is when you split the local color into a light and a dark. This is full spectrum, where you're actually going between two different colors, and that's soft edged. Duotone would be, let's see if we can even find a skateboard one. This is a more modern one. So this uses cut edge duotone. You can see the different two color blues in the shorts, in the shoes, in the skin, in the skull, right? So you just have fun with it. Now I'm going to keep cutting out some of my highlights because those are going to help me no matter what else I choose. But then I'm going to show you how we can start stealing colors from inspiration now that I've gotten beyond flatting. But I like the inspiration of those skateboard graphics just for, for showing skinny little highlights can sometimes give a lot of texture, a lot of interest. And I'm just kind of scribbling those in with my lasso. You can't get crisper edged than just selecting with your lasso with no feather. I don't have any feather setting on. And you could think about light logic and where the light's coming from and where the cast shadows would be, where the form shadows would be. But ultimately, you just want something that looks compelling. And in digital art, you're not losing anything by trying it out. So experiment and have fun. Even if you end up not using all of these duotone highlights, they are there for your use if you want to. And as soon as you choose some duotones, you get a lot more depth all of a sudden in your image. Almost no matter where you put them. And they don't even need to be perfectly cleanly selected. Because your line art kind of cleans up the edges for you. And it can be kind of cool to have little uh, offsets and irregularities in the coloring. I think as long as your line art is clean, we can forgive a lot of the other stuff. Now, to do a good job with flat color that you keep as flat color, you have to spend a lot longer choosing just the right colors. And I did not do that. These colors are insane. But with duotone and the choices you make, sometimes those can lead you to good selections. Like, I'm not minding this kind of dark bluish purple helmet. It kind of works. 